I think there's a little bit at the back of your mind. We've come so far, we've done so well. This is our cup final. Five minutes to go, you think maybe, can we just bring it to extra time? We've got a chance. Unfortunately, we didn't. The occasion was brilliant, but you'd be surprised. There was no laughing and joking after the game. Everyone was so disappointed that we hadn't made the final. You couldn't have convinced any, any of, us, of us sat in that changing room that we weren't going to get there. We, we, we believed in it. You know? Cup games are a little bit different because you can be in a situation where it looks um, for, for all odds that you're going to go out and, and, and suddenly something happens that changes all that. The sign of a good team really is one that doesn't know it's beaten. Bullman hits it, it's a goal! Unbelievable! Wickham have pulled it level in the final seconds through Paul McCarthy! And then it rolls around to uh, the penalties. And he's skated! Wickham Wanderers are in the quarter-final of the FA Cup in an unbelievable story here at Selhurst Park. 2-0 down in the first game, 1-0 down and 2-1 down tonight. They've scored an equaliser in the dying moments of the game and now from the penalty spot, Wickham Wanderers have done it! Jamie Bates. Harkin running through his onside. Gets it under control, plays it through nicely for Andy Ramble. Certainly a chance for Ramble. Pushed over, the referee's going to award a penalty. And Simpson against Hook. Oh, just inside the post, Mike Simpson. Good effort by David Hook in the Borough goal. Got his fingertips to it, but the pace on the ball took it into the back of the net via the post. And Wickham have a two goal lead. Bates and Cousins have gone forward on this occasion. Simpson and Brown standing over things. It's Brown with the ball in. Bates is there with a the header. Jamie Bates, it's four in two games. Six for the season for Jamie Bates. 3 0 to the Blues. Little did we realise at the start of it how far this cup tie would take us. And um, we won comfortably 3 0. Probably most notable for Barry Simpson coming on and making, um, making himself the oldest player in the in FA Cup history, um, with a cameo performance, I think it was called. So Wickham off to a good start. But after that comfortable first round win, Millwall would provide tougher opposition. Mark McGee's Division 2 High Flyers hit the woodwork twice and also found Martin Taylor, not for the first time in this cup run, an inspired mood. On a terrible pitch at the Den, the Blues came away with a creditable nil-nil draw. McGee promised Wickham would be given a footballing lesson on Jim Gardner's excellent playing surface eight days later. That didn't prove the case. It's Brown that takes the free kick. Heads go up. A chance here and Wickham are in the lead! Andy Rammel makes it eight for the season. Floated in, the heads go up. Still the chance. And Millwall have equalised. And uh, everybody misses it. Oh, red kick. And Paul McCarthy puts the ball in the back of the net on 44 minutes to make it with the Wanderers 2. Millwall 
one. The droll comment of Laurie Sanchez afterwards was that Millwall boss Mark McGee wanted a decent pitch to play on. We gave him one, then gave his team a footballing lesson, said the Wickham boss. That was a good performance at home result and, and it made a few people um, look up and take notice of us. I remember talking to the players before the second game and I said to them, you know, that on the back of a little bit of luck like that, you know, the ball should have gone in the goal and it didn't. Um, that perhaps a cup run can be built and we, as I say we came home on the Tuesday night and I thought we were, we were excellent that night, um, played really really well, fully deserved to win 2-1 and in the process gave them a footballing lesson on, on what was a good pitch. Wickham Wonderlights, an all-girl dance troupe, were on display for the next round, providing the glamour that the cup draw failed to do when Grimsby were pulled out of the hat. is in there from Nielsen and unfortunately it's the Blues that have conceded just on the stroke of half time Taylor with the long ball forward aimed at McCarthy gets a flick down Rammel's there got possibly for Brady played out for McCarthy it's in the back of the net Paul McCarthy and the hero of the second round replay against Millwall has poached the goal that gets Wickham back on level terms in this game. So it was back up to Humberside on a wet and windy January night for the third round replay. Come back in now by Gallimore. Jeffries, a lovely knockdown. Good save by Martin Taylor. Good left peg. Let's see whether Wickham have got one. They have. Yeah. And in. Well, Danny Coyne had it covered. There's no question about that. But it was a man who got free who was able to get the touch on it that did the job. Wickham take the lead after 29 minutes. Edge of the area. Nobody attacking it. 2 0. Well, Wickham are in charge now. Great strike by Simpson. To him on the edge of the penalty area, there was nobody with him, and in two minutes, Wickham Wanderers go 2 0 in front. Right footed now coming in, not a bad one. Nicely off, Jeffrey. Yes, look at this easy, no marking. Mark Rogers this time, Rogers makes it 3 1, and I think you've got to say that is a tie so much. This is history, isn't it? This is a little bit of history in the making. All credit to the players and the manager. This man keeps knocking them down, doesn't he? He really does. He really does. I am so pleased. The game looked as though it was going for a nil-nil. It didn't look it. And again, they hit the crossbar off a good attack just before we'd scored and, and Sam Parkin was alone from Chelsea at the time um, you know great cross from I think it was Brownie wasn't it and uh, Sam's got his head on the ball and his head isn't his best strength um, but he's put it in off the ground and um, we won up with eight minutes left to go and you're thinking hold it a minute this is, this is getting better and better Lee now with the corner hangs it up and then there is McCarthy it's a goal for Randy Rammel Johnny on the spot inside the six yard box and after a sustained period of pressure from the Blues Andy Rammel is the man there to pick up the loose ball and a simple job of tapping the ball home and Naylor first time crossing and a simple header into the back of the net from Carl Robinson Rammel again asked to get the flick on and once more Polly able to release the ball Brown with the ball in and Parkin is there that could be the goal that sends Wickham into the fifth round. We held on and I picked up my second performance of the week award. In fact, I didn't pick up my second performance. That was the one that I never got a performance of the week award for. <laughs> we've progressively beaten stronger and stronger teams as we've gone along. We've beaten um, Haraborough to start with. Then we've beaten uh, Millwall, who are the best team in our division. Then going on to beat Grimsby. Then Wolves are a better team than Grimsby. And of course then we draw my old team, Wimbledon. 
Taylor still feeling his midriff as Hardly curls the ball in. Ramel has to jump. It's a header into the far post by Williams. Strikes it deep in towards Ramel. And he jumps, but he's beaten to it. May drop for Keith Ryan. Fine save from Kelvin Davis. That's the best chance that Wickham have seen this afternoon. Now Ainsworth doing well. Gets the ball through to Yule. Still going, Jason Yule. Agaman looking to on a run. Drop ball may break for him. And just manages to squeeze it inside the right-hand post. But exactly what Laurie Sanchez didn't want was the opposition getting a second goal just before the break. And that's really made Wickham's task all the harder in the second half. Parking. Across the floor. Baird is there. Comes out to Simpson with a strike on goal. It's come on the post. There's the, it's the first goal for the Blues. And now we are going to have a grandstand finish for this game. Hawkins then tries to get it back. It's got to be a back pass. It's got to be a back pass. Referee trying to get the players back on the goal line. Brown will have to strike the ball quickly. Here's Steve Brown and eventually it's blocked. It comes to Parkin. Back for Vinicum to play back in. The ball drops for Steve Brown. There is the second goal. There is the second goal. It's two apiece. Wickham have come from two down to get back on level terms with Wimbledon. So a great comeback by the Blues. Completed by Steve Brown's controversial equaliser ten minutes from time. Although the replay was only three days later, over 4,500 Wanderers fans made it to Selhurst Park. They were in for a thriller and a very long night. But just look out for a clean-cut villain in white who, ten years on, was to become a cult hero at Adams Park. And to Ryan, looks for Rammel. Brown takes over and tries an ambitious effort which produced a marvellous save by Kelvin Davis. Adjimang. And Ainsworth has broken away. Danger for Wickham here. Still Ainsworth and a great finish. Moments after Wickham almost took the lead. Wimbledon do. On it goes to Bullman. Two players on the right here for Wickham. Tried the long shot. Rammel with the chance. Beautiful save. Carroll. Yes. Wickham equalised. Dave Carroll. 31 minutes gone, and deservedly Wickham are level. Gales cross is good, and the header goes wide. The referee seems to have pointed to the spot. I think the referee's given a penalty. The Wickham players can't believe it. And deep into stoppage time, Mr. Wollstoneholm who gave a controversial Wickham goal in the first match on Saturday, has pointed for handball. And surely there won't be enough time for 10 men Wickham to come back if he scores here. And Taylor has saved it! Magnificent save by Martin Taylor. Pumped back in by Cunningham. And the header goes straight to the Wickham goalkeeper again. What a hero! Certainly Wickham have overcome one or two blows here, losing their two strikers in quick succession, then losing a player, then conceding a penalty in the dying moments of the game. And, and there's a chance straight away, and a goal straight away. Well, isn't that amazing? In the dying seconds of 90 minutes, they miss from 12 yards, and Gray, the young striker who came in the second half, has pounced in the opening seconds of extra time. And Wickham dredge up something special now with only five minutes of the cup campaign remaining as the score stands at the moment. Steve Brown, who managed to do just that, of course, on Saturday with that late equaliser. This time he drops it in short for Townsend and that gives Gale the opportunity to go forward. And look for Jason Ewell. Great save by Taylor. Magnificent one-handed save by the Wickham goalkeeper has kept his team's hopes faintly alive. 
There are only seconds remaining now. Oh, the ball bobbled nastily there for Davis. It comes to Parkin. Is there drama left in this tie yet, I wonder? Parkin for Wickham. He's done really well. Can he get his cross in? He can. And Bullman hits it. It's a goal! Unbelievable! Wickham have pulled it level in the final seconds through Paul McCarthy. They will not lay down and die. Wickham's cup dream is still alive. Paul McCarthy has equalised in the last seconds here at Selhurst Park. And surely now it's going to go to penalty kicks. Laurie Sanchez, as ever, the coolest man around. Well, it's been a dramatic FA Cup tie already, but the real drama starts here. The first of five penalty kicks allocated to each side is going to be taken by Steve Brown of Wickham, the man whose late goal on Saturday sent this tie into this unbelievably dramatic replay. Brown against Kelvin Davis. Advantage Wickham. 1-0 from the spot. Kenny Cunningham will take the first Wimbledon kick. Slight advantage to Wimbledon in that the penalties are being taken at the end of the ground where their fans are. He's hit the bar. It's more than a slight advantage to Wickham now. They lead 1-0. And now Jason Cousins, 10 years at the club, can make it 2-0. And does! The first two penalties successful for Wickham. Now Jason Ewell steps up to take this one for Wimbledon. This to make it 2-1. Oh, it's beautifully taken right in the corner. And it is 2-1. Penalty number three for Wickham will be taken by another of the players who goes all the way back to their non-league days. Keith Ryan in his testimonial season. And he's skied it over the bar. Still, though, Wickham have the advantage. But Marcus Gale is going to take the next penalty for Wimbledon. And this one, of course, can bring them level. Normally a very trusty left foot, Marcus Gale. And trusty it was on this occasion. Wimbledon draw level. Next penalty for Wickham Wanderers will be taken by Danny Bullman. Oh yes, sweetly taken, high into the net. Wickham in front, 3-2 at the moment. Jonathan Hunt, who came on as a late substitute. A beautiful striker of the ball normally. And he got that in the corner, even though Martin Taylor guessed correctly. 3-3. Three, three. Well, each team has had four penalty kicks. Each team scored three times. Parkin for Wickham. Drives it high into the net to make it 4-3. So, the crucial penalty from Wimbledon's point of view is coming up now. And the young player on loan from Chelsea, sweeps it high into the net and Neil Ardley, one of the longest serving players at Wimbledon must score here, otherwise Wimbledon are out and Wickham Wanderers will go through to the FA Cup quarter-finals if he does score, it's sudden death from the penalty spot and he has scored 4-4, sudden death now Chris Vinicom who's never scored for Wickham and who missed a penalty in a league match against Oxford United earlier this season to take the next one for them. And scores! Well, this is nail-biting tension at Selhurst Park and now Darren Holloway, the former Sunderland player, has to score to keep Wimbledon in the competition. And he does so very emphatically. A moment of real drama for Ben Townsend, a youngster who's only had half a dozen or so games in Wickham's first team, now charged with the responsibility of scoring from the penalty spot. And does so! 
What a moment of satisfaction in that young man's career. That takes real bottle. And bearing in mind he missed uh, an opportunity to score from open play. That was a courageous kick. Well done. Now it's Wayne Gray who of course scored the goal early on in extra time to give Wimbledon the advantage. He has to score now from 12 yards out. And he has as well. There have been some very good penalties here. Well, what a huge prize is at stake here. A place in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. Jamie Bates for Wickham. And he's missed it. Advantage Wimbledon now. If they score, they are through. And Wickham are out. It's Peter Hawkins who has the job of scoring here to send Wimbledon into the quarterfinals. And Taylor saved it! Unbelievable drama continues here. Is there no end to this tie? Paul McCarthy, whose late, late goal for Wickham in extra time, brought about this penalty shootout, has scored! The coolest man around by the looks of it as well. I don't know if Wimbledon have actually decided who's taking their next penalty. It looks as though it's going to be the goalkeeper. Can't believe that because with all due respect to Kelvin Davis, his kicking during the uh, match was not of the highest order, but he's been given the duty of scoring from the spot to keep them in the competition. And he does so. Well done, the keeper. It's not very often you see this, is it? Two goalkeepers taking penalties against each other in their little private duel. And Taylor has scored as well. Taylor's got to be shot stopper. Williams will take the kick. And he's skied it. Wickham Wanderers are in the quarterfinal of the FA Cup. In an unbelievable story here at Selhurst Park. 2-0 down in the first game. 1-0 down and 2-1 down tonight. They've scored an equaliser in the dying moments of the game. And now from the penalty spot, Wickham Wanderers have done it. And a team that had never been into the third round of the FA Cup before are now in the quarterfinals. What a story at Selhurst Park. What drama. What fantastic scenes of joy. A second division club has made it to the last eight against all the odds with a man sent off 20 minutes from the end with a goal seconds from the end and now from the penalty shootout they're through and Wimbledon are out. It was a night and a half that. I mean, when you come in and find out the Tramier have won come back from 3-0 down against the Hampton on the same night and I've been quoted as saying it and I think it's true it, it was the night really that the FA Cup was reignited for the country we're in the quarterfinals and all of a sudden everybody's talking about us now um, progressively and then we draw Leicester which again obviously the connections with Martin being there and Guppy who, who, who was here being there and everybody I think gave the impression that we'd done really well to get where we were and that'll do us and thanks very much for coming um, and little did they know that um, we were better than that What they were going to throw at us, uh, at us was nothing different um, than what we'd dealt with before. Better players may be, but nothing that was going to sort of worry us too much. Impy underneath it. Savage. And between them, they've given it to Brown. Instinctive shot. Well, a fine save from the goalkeeper, who is much busier than his counterpart. Excellent effort from Steve Brown. In towards McCarthy and Wickham lead. And it's his fifth goal in the FA Cup. Paul McCarthy. Poor marking from Leicester. Wickham won't care about that. And the underdogs are ahead. No emotion from the manager. But plenty from the Wickham fans and the players. It has been coming. His team mean an equaliser. This is Jerry Taggart. That's a decent ball for Edie. 
Is it in the middle? He's unmarked and he's on target. Really well worked goal. And Leicester are level. Double substitution. And Sando is coming on and so is Castlebite. Craig and Ryan are the men being replaced for Wickham. They have been given fantastic support. The second division side. Brown with the free kick. Away by Matt Elliott. And back to Steve Brown though. Oh, was that handball? It looked very much like it. Stephen Oakes. Referee says no. And some of the Wickham players can't believe that. He's had a guilty look. Well, Laurie Sanchez is absolutely convinced that his team have been robbed of a penalty there. He's got to be careful. Steve Bennett, the referee, having a word back. And that was the incident. And he has been sent off. The Wickham manager will have to watch the rest of the game from the tunnel. Wickham still coming forward and they've got a free kick here. And a foul by the substitute, Arna Gunlausen. Yeah, two minutes into injury time. 24 in the box for Simpson's free kick. Vincent double-fisted punch by Royce. Here's Bulmer. Back into the mixer. Knocked back by Bates. Hesando! It's in! And the man who they found through an advert on the internet has really put Wickham on the worldwide map. You couldn't make it up. You really couldn't. Surely they're there now. We're deep in stoppage time. The man born in Belfast who grew up in Ghana. He's played in Scotland, in Finland. But he's never scored a goal as important as that one. Bates is not back. His Sando buried it. That's the manager's reaction. Tell him the magic's gone out the cup. And it looks like Steve Brown has been sent off here for celebrating the goal. He took his shirt off. He'd already been booked. And Steve Bennett has applied the letter of the law. Rather heartlessly, it has to be said. Leicester have got to get it forward. But they haven't got time. And second division Wickham Wanderers are through to the semi-finals of the FA Cup. The goal from Roy Asando has stunned the Leicester fans. But Wickham and their supporters are delirious. Roy, well, have you come back down to earth yet? Yes, I mean, I mean I'm quite... A feet on the ground type man so I mean you, you, you realise that um, you've got to enjoy these moments um, but don't get carried away with them I guess you said before you played the game that you weren't there to make up the numbers not many people probably believed you but you proved your point yeah I mean the, to be fair the group of players we, we joked on the Thursday when we were just doing the, 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 the winding up for the, going up there and all the arrangements and I said you know a few of them were staying over I said well don't get too drunk because we'll have a replay on Tuesday at the ground and they said don't be silly we'll be playing Stoke because we're going to knock them out first time so the confidence if anything surprisingly they were overconfident and I was a little bit worried that they were perhaps a little bit too overconfident usually it's the manager has to pep a team up but this team were ready for it Saturday um, and you know fully deserved fully deserved the victory and it was a brilliant day had by one and all I think I think what's impressed a lot of people as well is it, it wasn't a smash and grab victory a lucky last minute goal you, you're basically the better side yeah, I mean, even Peter Taylor, and I thought Matt Elliott was very gracious in the pa papers and uh, on TV. He said on the day the better team won. They, they obviously didn't perform to what they can do. Um, we, we performed to a level that, you know, we, we've played better, I must admit, but we played to a level. And um, we were fortunate that when the ball was to be put in the back of the net, we did it twice. Has it sunk in yet that you're in the FA Cup semi-final? It hasn't. It's a funny, funny feeling, really, you know. That when the final whistle went, everyone went crazy, the fans went mad. And even after the game in the dressing room, you know, there was, you know, there was an early silence as such. The players didn't believe what we've achieved, you know, for the second division club to come here on the qualifying of the cup and to, to beat a good Leicester side. You know, it, it's an achievement. I, I think it'll sink in so. Definitely a fantastic result to go there as complete underdogs in the match and, uh, and to win and be in the semi-final of a cup. Something when I was at Wickham that you could, uh, certainly in our non-league days, that you would never have dreamed of. 
Mm. Uh, but Laurie Sanchez has to take fantastic credit for it, and uh, what we consider a non-believable performance and fantastic result to be in the semi-final of an FA Cup is simply incredible. Yeah, incredible, incredible times. And for no one was it more incredible than for Roy Essendo. You can you can kind of feel the tide turn a little bit. The fans get a bit agitated. They start getting a bit on the players' backs because come on. Your Premier League club, you should be scoring against them. You haven't scored, and we're well in the game. And then, yeah, I thought we deserve to take the lead because we created a few chances. Obviously, they created a few as well, but I mean, you've got to take a chance. So we took our chance, and then again, it, the game turns on them because their fans start getting agitated, and it's they start getting a bit more. Oh my God, they've scored. Honest with most people, at that point, you're kind of thinking we've got 10, 15 minutes left against a Premier League team. A replay would be great if you're honest. I just remember the cross coming in to the far post and it went over my head, so you're kind of thinking, okay. And then literally just the instinct of the forward, you want to turn and face the play and just get in and around that six yard box. And I remember the ball being headed back across the goal and the time just kind of slows down a bit. There's sometimes you'll, you'll make a connection like a strike or you head it, and as soon as you make contact, you know it's going in. And that was one of those times, as soon as you headed it, I just knew he, he didn't save in that. And it's, and it's just, Double check, it's in the back of it, and then off you go. I think I scored at their end, so they was like deadly. You heard a pin drop at their bit, and then as I ran around the side, then you just heard the noise of the Wickham fans. So it just kind of went from deadly silence to euphoria, and then everybody's jumping on you, like, and then you kind of realize, oh, I think we might have won this. <laughs> as soon as the ref blows a whistle, it's like you've just won another game of football, and everybody's happy in you high five each other and everybody's got the usual stuff but then you kind of go to change rooms and you're thinking oh yeah it's the FA Cup and then oh yeah we're at Filby Street and oh, we're beating Leicester and it's, then it kind of you know wow I mean it was the most extraordinary story wasn't it yeah in the Wimbledon game in the course of you know that game we lost Andy Rammel with a hamstring injury which had can be out for two three weeks um, Bairdy had his crucial snaps in the tackle and um, I think it was Sam Park in second last game um, who came on and did very well in that game. And so he left the club soon afterwards. And all of a sudden, from having loads of forwards, we ended up with having no forwards. And uh, as I said to you that day, I said, well, stick something on the, uh, stick something out. If anybody wants to play in a quarter final and they're not cup tied, give us a shout. And we had an agent pick it up off teletext. Uh, said, I've got a lad that he'd been taking around to a few clubs. Roy came. Um, he did okay in a reserve game. We played him on the Saturday in the first game of trial. He did okay again without setting the world alight. And we took him on the basis that we needed a forward, and he was a big lad, and you know, he wasn't he wasn't bad. He stepped forward and, and stuck his head on the ball and, and, and made himself a a name. You know, I mean, people have never heard of him suddenly know about him now, and it, it was the magic of the FA Cup at his best again. It was a it was a nice way to go, and it was great time to be involved with the club. Your life's, life's what it is and your career's what it is and I'm thankful I had it and it was great to do something that's stuck in the memory for so long. Um, I'm quite a feet on the ground type man so I mean you, you, you realise that um, you've got to enjoy these moments um, but don't get carried away with them. It's a major, major achievement, far beyond words really. Um, credit to them um, and now you know, let's see if we can take that story a little bit further. So to the semi-final draw, the burning question for most fans, who would the giant killers face? Number two. Which means that Wickham Wanderers, who've never been beyond the third round until this season, will play... Number one. Liverpool five times FA Cup winners. Back to Wickham Wanderers then. Monday morning training, head still firmly in the clouds. Steve, have you come down to earth yet after Saturday? Uh, I think just about actually. Um, it's been a great weekend uh, for everybody associated with the club, the fans. I think the whole town's buzzing like so. It's been a massive. It was a massive game on Saturday, and I thought we won the game on merit really. It ended in a sad way for you with the sending off, but there's been a, a massive outpouring of sympathy from everywhere for you today. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people have, uh, I think it started with, uh, on 606 with the free Steve Brown 1 campaign. It, it sort of gathered momentum from there, but uh, I appreciate that. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, referee's got his directives, he has to follow the rule book, and it, I think it does actually say if a player removes his jersey, he has to be sent from the field of play, which, which he did. Uh, you know, people look at it in the context of the game and... and 
the misfortunes that my sons had, uh, they thought it was a bit hard, but you know, I'll take the win and just get on with it. And it looks like that you'll be there for the semi-final and your son's going to be there too, I understand. Yeah, the chairman said to me at the hotel, you know, he's our lucky mascot now, so we'll he'll have to lead us out when we go uh, to wherever it is we play the semi-final against uh, Liverpool. So I was dead pleased for him. Paul, can you believe the exalted company are in now? Arsenal, Tottenham, Liverpool and Wickham. You have to pinch yourself. You know, at the start of the season, it would have been an achievement for us to get to the top of the fourth round. But to get to the semi-final, it's, it's beyond all our dreams. Have you given much thought to the semi-final and, and facing the likes of Owen and Fowler and Heskey? I'm a mad Liverpool fan myself, so it was the, it was the tie I wanted. I wanted to play Liverpool. If we get beat by them, it would be nice to see them play in the final. And everyone in the country who's not a Liverpool fan is going to be on your side, aren't they? I'd imagine so, yeah. But uh, we're just going to go and enjoy the day. You know, we, we said that going into the game on Saturday. The main thing was that we, we enjoy it, and we did. The bookmakers gave you no chance at all on Saturday. You were 10-1, to 1, I believe. What sort of a chance do you give yourself against Liverpool and getting to the final in Cardiff? It's going to be even more difficult. You know, they're a quality side. They've already won the, the League Cup. Uh, as I said, we're just going to go... If we, if we get a result, it'll be fantastic, but just enjoy the day will be the main thing. And so we, we draw Liverpool. Um, obviously, each round there seems to have been a connection. This time round, it was that, um, obviously, myself and Gibbo played in that famous 88 final. So, Liverpool at uh, Villa Park, we had the whole tent, uh, we had the home dressing room, we had everything really, and, and we were lo really looking forward to it. Rams had come back and was fit by then. And everyone was really buoyant, and, and as I say, the, the publicity was just phenomenal. I mean, the publicity we, we, we picked up was um, unbelievable, really. And we took the players away, to be fair, to get away from me that week, down to Spain, uh, to La Cala Resort in Mijas. And we had a good week's training down there, um, which got the boys away, got them together. Some, the weather was, was, was great to train in, just a T-shirt and shorts. Um, the sun was out, they played golf. And, and it, it was just what the team needed, to be fair, just what we needed to get away. And then we come back and all of a sudden it's um, Sunday, we're on TV, nine million people watching us. I think there's a little bit in the back of your mind, we've come so far, we've done so well, this is our cup final. I can't believe it. I'm still pinching myself now. Teams like Man United haven't got this far, so how we can have done it, it's amazing. Come on! Come on! It's nice to see the turnout, I feel like. I mean, it's incredible. We never knew there were so many Wickham fans in the world. <laughs> Bet you never thought you'd see this day. Yeah. Never, and we probably won't see it again, but we're going to enjoy it today. Oh, no! It's Buckingham's big day out. The biggest game in the history of second division Wickham might just be one of the biggest FA Cup upsets of all time. It's a mismatch, that's for sure, the FA Cup semi-final here at Villa Park. But don't try telling this lot. 20,000 Wickham fans fervently believed the side could upset the odds. All very relaxed, but when the afternoon got serious, Wickham were up for the fight. Here's Ron Atkinson and Clive Tildesley. Hoopier. And they challenged there by Rammel. Fowler's managed to turn it out to Ziga. And Fowler's got in behind Wickham, and he has support from Michael Owen here. Taylor had to be quickly out, rode his luck a little bit, but... Brown was there to shepherd the ball back into his goalkeeper's park. Yeah, great decision making there from Taylor. He was the hero against Wimbledon in one of the previous rounds. And there he made a great, brave decision to come early. Otherwise, Michael Owen would have been opening the accounts. This is Michael Simpson. Caught in possession by Christian Ziegler. Yeah, he's desperate for one of the front players to make his show there. Ryan to Ramble. Ryan's got away from Herpin, has gone for the chip here, and he was aware that Sonder Vestival was four or five paces off his line. Audacious effort by Keith Ryan. And amongst those watching today, a very proud former Wickham Wanderers manager, John Gregory. A lot of people believe that Loris Sanchez has the calibre to follow in the footsteps of Gregory and his predecessor, Martin O'Neill. Now this is where you feel they have their chances. Set plays, corners, free kicks in the last third, throw-ins. So they're going to try and load the brigade in.
Simpson to take. And there's a free there from Ryan, and that was Walker for Vestavell. And that was almost a carbon copy of the manager's goal against Liverpool. <laughs> but this is where they've got to be careful now. Oh, I thought he's going to overslide then, Brown. Brown at least put McCallis under pressure, prevented him from uh, developing the break. Bombing. In towards Owen. Great chance from Michael Owen. Great save, too, by Martin Taylor. Really wonderful stop by the Wicker Wanderers goalkeeper, preventing Michael Owen from giving Liverpool the lead. Barmby, Fowler, oh, it's terrific control from Robbie Fowler, held back by Michael Simpson, was a foul, no doubt about it. Armand takes in towards Herpia, who did well under pressure, Ziga! Effort and it just bounced past the left hand post of a helpless Martin Taylor. McAllister, here goes Gerard. Carragher hooked in towards Heskey. Smart stop by Martin Taylor. Hasn't been troubled for a while now. But he propelled himself away to his right, little wink of the eye, he's enjoying himself. Yeah, he knew he was going to save that. Good ball in, smart header. But a nice one for Martin Taylor, just kept his hands warm for a while. We can't afford to let their thoughts race too far ahead. Liverpool are still coming forward. There are still 15 minutes or so left to play. And here's Michael Owen, Taylor's done exceptionally well again. Just couldn't lift it over the on-rushing goalkeeper. And Martin Taylor makes another heroic save. McAllister takes. Taylor punches. Using his one good arm. Gerard with a cross. It's Wojcicki! It's been a long, long time in coming. But the Liverpool Cup adventure continues. Emil Heskey gives them the lead. They could be heading back to Cardiff again. Gerard provided the cross. It's the substitutes. Quality balling, great quality balling. And for the first time in the game, a Wickham defender hasn't cleared the header, but he tucks it away nicely. He's big, he's strong, he's put it away. Uh, ironically enough, the first corner of the game. heading the way of Jamie Bates no plenty of options here for Liverpool Fowler Harman or Murphy it's Robbie Fowler oh terrific the man who lifted the Worthington Cup in Cardiff puts the seal on it for Liverpool they're heading back to the Millennium Stadium Anxious, nervous looks have disappeared. Robbie Fowler will celebrate with anybody who wants to celebrate. A superb free kick. Yeah, clever, clever goal. Hardly any, hardly any run up at all. Just walks on and curls it with his left foot. Keeper, no chance. That is as good a free kick as you'll see. Through towards Ryan. Oh, they've got one back. It's Keith Ryan for Wickham. They just will not lie down. Three minutes remaining. It's one of the originals, Keith Ryan, who played non league football for Wickham Wanderers, who has given them a chance, just a breath, a glimpse of a chance of rescuing this semi final. Big long ball down the middle. Little flick on, and he takes that ever so well. That's the ball off his line, and three big long minutes now. When the game looked all cut and dry, and you're thinking, oh, Liverpool going to make it three or four. In by 
Vidicka. Hopier's header finds a way back into the safe hands of Solna Festival. I'm just wondering whether that was nominated there from the Big Herpier. Because he's helped it back to the keeper in a moment of really coolness or whether he enforced him to the error. The ifs and buts won't matter in a minute's time. All that will matter is the scoreline. And Liverpool have Wickham just about where they want them. Only just. Now, can Cousins launch it forward or will he entrust that to his goalkeeper Taylor? Another towering header from Herpia. Back in though by Bates. McCarthy's up there full time now. Ryan was running in behind. Holcher managed to smuggle it clear. Cousins. Body check by Fowler. Free kick to Wickham. This is the last throw of the charmed Wickham Wanderers dice. Give it a blow, boys. Cousins. It's towards Bates, it's won again by Herpier, it's cleared by Gerrard. Fowler contesting the ball, manfully for Liverpool. Murphy is able to bring it out of harm's way. Play the last few seconds in Wickham's half, playing it in the penalty area with Gerrard. Oh. Agonising, absolutely agonising. He's in there somewhere, Stephen Gerrard. Yeah, lovely threaded ball through here. Makes, he makes the strikers run. He's here, and it doesn't matter. He's in the position where you think just chip it over, chip it over the keeper. The romance is over. Reality returns to the FA Cup in the shape of a really mouth-watering final. It's Arsenal versus Liverpool. Liverpool are going back to Cardiff and who knows what in this everlasting cup season of theirs. Wickham are going back to the second division relegation fight. Who knows when or if their paths will ever cross again. But this is another unforgettable chapter in the story of the FA Cup. Martin Taylor defied them for so long. But the final score in this anxious sponsored FA Cup semi-final at Villa Park is Wickham Wanderers 1, Liverpool 2. They're, they're a phenomenal outfit. Spent an awful lot of money over the last few years. And I think it was a nagging doubt in everybody's mind. I'd say outside of the players and myself, I mean, I had no doubt that we performed. And in fact, I said after we lost to Walsall between the two ties, 5 1, again, because we had to pull Bates, you have to rest him for the, didn't want him to get booked or suspended for the semi final. I said to the reporters after that, that won't happen again, I can guarantee that. And I was sure in my own mind that it wouldn't. And I think we surprised everybody. Um, not so much myself, not so much Gibbo, not so much the players, that how well we did play, how how competent we performed. To be fair, I mean, to Wickham, you know, every one of the players is. They performed magnificent, you know, two one is uh it's great for us to get to a good final but you know, Wickham made his fight uh, until till the final whistle. We expected that sort of game. They would give their all, they would battle hard. All we had to do is to be extremely professional, uh, not concede a goal. Yes, we're disappointed. Um, we've just lost a game of football. Not only a game of football, we've lost in the semi-final of the FA Cup. But I think, uh, in hindsight, when we sit down and reflect on the game, um, we've got a lot to be proud of. What was said at half-time? Because there must have been a, a growing belief to, to get them, you know, goalless at half-time. Yeah, there's just I think we wanted to just make sure we got to half-time <coughs> without conceding the goal. That's that's our first objective, and the second objective uh, was to try and. Nick a goal second half because the game's always going to open up as people get tired. And I, you know, as I said during the second half, I thought it was end to end, even though they still had slightly more possession than we did. But um, you know, I thought we'd give a good account of ourselves. Uh, we were trying to be resilient. Um, the game plan was to to be uh, level at half time, which we which we were, and um, that wasn't a problem. But then when they've got the power and, and, and just to make substitutions when they bring Heskey on and they bring Gerrard on and it's very, very difficult for us to, to match, to be honest. We kept a Liverpool team at bay for, for 78 minutes. Gerrard with a cross. It's towards Heskey! It's Robbie Fowler. Oh, terrific! And uh, Rhino scored. And it was nice that Ryan scored his testimonial year here. I mean, it was appropriate that someone from that era 
and scored. Then a long punt upfield, a little flick on, I get on the end of one. It gave us a little bit of a, you know, um, a little bit of cheer for um, for that that moment in time. Whittingham waiting underneath it. Four three towards Ryan. Five minutes to go, you think maybe, can we just bring it to extra time? We've got a chance. Unfortunately, we didn't. The occasion was brilliant, but you'd be surprised. There was no laughing and joking after the game. Everyone was so disappointed that we hadn't made the final. You couldn't have convinced any any of us, of us sat in that change room that we weren't going to get there. We, we, we believed in it, you know? All we can say is that we gave our best shot, and our best shot wasn't bad. And, um, Brought great credit to the to the players, to the staff, to the fans, to the club, and um, we can all dine out on that for a few years, hopefully.
Sakura of Laurie Sanchez in 